And I take heed to what my brother said about what's going on in the world today. There's a lot going on in the world. And we are his children and we need to be praying. We need to be praying uh, like never before. If you haven't prayed, you need to start learning how to pray. Because I know that we'll get excited about basketball games. We get excited about football games. And I know some of you got big, big voices. And you'll yell for a football game. You'll yell for a basketball game. You'll yell for your favorite activity. But when it comes to God, you won't pray. You won't give him glory. You won't give him honor. The one who made you, the one who died for you and me, we need to start giving God praise and learn how to do it. Amen. Amen. I want to give a word to them, and I'm going to see if you already have it. We're going to go into 1 Samuel chapter uh, 17, talking about David and Goliath. Amen. Amen. David and Goliath, because God has not given you a spirit of fear. Amen. He has not given you a spirit of a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind. And I'm going to stick with it because I believe in you. You should have your word on, on your phone or however. But me personally, I like carrying my word because I believe the Spirit of God is in this book. I believe the Spirit of God is in this book. And it behooves you to study, like he said, study to show yourself and prove unto God a work that you did not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're going to get into this here firsthand. But first of all, let me just pray for a Pastor Tony. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Father God, we ask for traveling mercies for Pastor Tony and Debbie God's wife. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you watch over them, Father God, protect them, God, on the highways. Father God, you said in your word, Father God, that you encamp around your people, Lord, so the Lord is also encamping about his people. And Father God, we ask that you go forward with him and be his be his forward reward, Lord, but be his rear reward on the highways and byways, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And I pray for the people here. I pray for the saints of God here, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you cover them under the blood of Jesus. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for your word. We thank you and praise you for your name. We thank you and praise you because of the Lord Jesus and what he's done for us. Father God, we just glorify you and we exalt you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We bind and curse every foul demonic force, every foul principality and power and rules of darkness of this world. You are bound in Jesus' name. You will not hinder the service. You will not interfere in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We have to take authority because God has given us authority over the adversary, over the devil, but that's only through Christ. You need to understand that. That when Jesus died and rose and went back to the Father, he said something real powerful. He says, occupy till I come. Yes. Occupy means you take up, you stand your ground. Yep. And there's no need, listen to me when I tell you this here. There is no need for the devil to be wrecking havoc, wrecking havoc in your life. There's no need for it. Because God has given you power and authority to deal with them. And Jesus was our example. Come on. Jesus was our example. When we see it, 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 that temptation thing in the wilderness, that was an example to show you how to fight the devil off. How to fight him and take authority over it. Everything that he came at Jesus with, he hit him with the word of God. Man shall not live by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You have to do the same thing. A little drop. Backdrop on the story is like this. Uh, the prophet Samuel was, was a little upset here in chapter 16 and 15 and so forth because uh, uh, the people wanted a king. And the guy they wanted, he was Saul. They said, give us a king like everybody else. So they went ahead and uh, uh, they wanted Saul as the king. And so as a result of that, uh, Saul became king and they picked him because he was head of both shoulders than everybody else. He was the tallest one in there. He was the tallest one, and that's the people said, give us a king like everybody else. So God gave them what they wanted. They wanted a king. And one of the things that struck me, and I didn't realize this until I saw a buddy of mine book. His name is Pastor Kevin B. Powell. He's my mentor, great mighty man of God. But one of the things he brought out was Saul's anointing 
versus David's anointing. And what Saul's anointing is found in 1 Samuel chapter 10, uh, it, it said, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon the head of Saul and kissed him and said, It is not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be a captain over his inheritance. So it said that he poured a vial. A vial was only about that big. A little vial of oil. He poured it on King Saul's head. Now when David, um, after Saul was disobedient, he did not do what God told him to do. When God told him to go and destroy the, Am the Amalekites, he said, kill everybody. Son, daughter, infant, cow, camel, king, everybody. Saul decided he's not going to kill everybody. He's going to save the king and the choice, uh, the, the choice animals. So as a result of him doing that, God rejected him from being king. God had enough of him. And so when the prophet said you come, that's why we gets me when the prophet came to town. Whenever the prophet came to town in the Old Testament, they'll say, are you come peaceably? Because they knew the judgment of God was going to fall. And there was no case. It was the same thing here. So when Samuel had came into town and everybody, you know, uh, uh, everybody was like, what's going on? What's, what's going on? And so uh, 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 Samuel was upset with him and said, what is the sound of this breeding of the sheep? Because the prophet, uh, because Saul said, I did everything the Lord told me to do. And he said, well, what is the breeding of the sheep that I'm here today? So as a result, what happened, uh, Samuel took him and said, bring that king here. And he cut him from the pillar of the post, killed him. He, he, he sliced him up, killed him without question. So um, Samuel was mourning and crying over uh, Saul. He was upset. This is what God said. Listen, you got to get up. What are you doing crying over him? I have chosen to be another king. I picked somebody else. And so he said, well, go to Jesse to Beth Beth in my house, because there I found me a king. And Jesse had like seven or eight sons. And so the prophet goes down. He's looking at them all. He sees a minute, a minute dab, and all the other ones came, came in front of him. He said, the Lord has not chosen one of, none of these. Is there another one? He said, yeah, there's the little guy who runs. But he keep it the sheep. And so Samuel said, listen, go get him because we will not sit down until you bring him to us. So as a result of that, they came, they bought him. And so the Lord said, there he is. They said he was short, he was strong, he was handsome. He was, was between 13 and 15 years old. He said, he, here he is, anoint him. So it says that in 1 Samuel, in 16 and 1, and the Lord said to Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him for reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil. <laughs> Fill thy horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided thee a king from a boy from among his sons. So there's a difference right there. Saul had a vial of oil put over him, David had a horn of oil poured over him from head to toe. So the anointing was different. It was, was different. So as we go with that, we go into, into uh, the, the 17th chapter of Samuel in 1 Samuel. And it talks about this challenge that's coming. So it says, Now the Philistines gathered the, their armies for battle and were assembled at Shoko, which belongs to Judah, and they camped between Shoko and Ezekiel in Ephes Dam. Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they camped in the valley of Elah and assembled in valley formation to meet the Philistines. The Philistines were standing on one side of the mountain and the Israel was standing on the other side of the mountain. On the other side and there was a valley in between them. We always hear the thing, multitudes, there's a scripture that says multitude, multitudes in the valley of decision. Multitudes are in the valley of decision today. A lot of folks got to make a decision as to whose side they on today. Either you on the Lord's side or you on the devil's side. And I dare to say that many people walk in the circle. A lot of folks are bound up on all kinds of stuff. And that's the prime example of the devil having some type of hold on you. I don't care what it is. I used to be caught up in the drugs, dogs, all kinds of stuff. The devil had me in his hand and he knew it. You, you know. But it wasn't until when I came into the knowledge of God, got some physical, got deliverance from those demons that was tormenting me, 
especially the demons of alcohol that like to drink every day. My wife can attest to you about that. But it wasn't until God came and when I surrendered my all to the Lord, I mean, give it up completely. You, whatever you're going through, you got to not want to do it. You got to have your heart made up, your mind must be made up. You got to be, your mind has to be made up. Lord, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's what it comes down to, to want to get rid of that thing. And so it goes when it says the multitude, there was a valley between them, verse 4. Then it says this, then a champion came out from the camp named Goliath of Gaz, who height was six uh, cubits in the span. It talks about, it said that he was like maybe over nine or ten feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head and he wore a coat of, mail, a coat of scale armor, overlapping metals, which weighed about 5,000 shekels of bronze. Some said 120 something pressed pounds. He had a brown ship protectors on his legs and a bronze javelin hung between his shoulders. And his wooden shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, the blade. And the head of his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron and a shield bearer walked in front of him. His armor bearer walked in front of him. This beam he was carrying on his hand was like 25 plus pounds to throw at you. So he was a strong man to be able to carry that. And if that thing hits you, ain't going to be nothing left to you. And so he goes on here. It said, Goliath stood and shouted to the battle lines of Israel, saying to them, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not the Philistine and not you servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight me and kill me, we, then we will become your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, and you shall become our servants and, show, and, and serve us. And so this giant was coming up before them to intimidate them. Come on, he's nine foot plus height. And you're uh, no more height six, uh, whatever, six, five, whatever the most. Saul knew he was the tallest one. The king knew. He should be the one down there fighting. He was the one closest to his height. But check out what happens here. <laughs> he goes one together, and the Philistines said in verse 10, check out what he said. Again, the Philistines said, I defy the battle lines of Israel this day. Give me a man so that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistines, they were, great, they were dismayed and they were greatly afraid. What happened? A spirit of fear came on them. A spirit of fear didn't just come on Saul. It came on the whole camp. Everybody was afraid. And at that time, it goes on, it says here, they were greatly afraid. Now it goes into the story about David. It said, well, David was the son of the Ephraimite of Bethlehem and Judah named Jesse, who had eight sons. Jesse was old in the days of Saul, advanced in his years among men. His three older sons had left to follow Saul into the battle. The name of his three sons who went into the battle was Eli, <clears throat> Eliab, the firstborn, next to Benadab, and then the third, Shammah. David was the youngest, and, the, and now the three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend to his father's sheep and the flock in Bethlehem. The Philistine Goliath came out, check this out, morning and evening and took his stand 40 days. So my question is going to ask you, how long are you going to put up whatever you're going through? How long are you going to put up with that bad habit? How long is this thing going to keep plaguing you every single day? 40 days. He comes up and says the same thing. I have to find all of you to live in your life. Give me a man that we can play. Every day. 40 days. And I, like I said, I like it there too. Whatever you're going through, whatever's going on in your life, how long are you going to keep putting up with that? How long is this thing going to keep beating you up? How long is that habit going to hold you? 40 days? Some of you have been going through things for years, and you ought to be sick and tired of going through what you're going through now. You ought to be sick and tired of it. And you ought to be wanting to get free. And Jesus has made it possible for you to be free. Verse 17, it said that Jesse said to David, 
David his son, take you to your brothers that you find mostly great and so forth, and take this cheese and all this stuff and take it to the commanders and to give it to Saul. And so it goes on there. So when verse 20 it says, So David got up early in the morning, he left the flock with a keeper, he picked up the provisions and went just as Jesse had directed him. And he came to the encampment as the army was going out into battle formation, shouting the battle cry. They were all getting ready to go back out again. Now, already remember, they have been doing this for 40 days. So you're getting up to do the same thing again. You're getting up to do the same thing again. And it says in verse 21, Israel and the Philistines drew up to the battle formation, army against army. Then David left his provisions and the care of the supply keeper and ran to the ranks. And he greeted his brothers. And as he was walking with them, check out what happened. Behold, the champion, Philistine of Gath, named Goliath, was coming up from the army of the Philistine, and he spoke the same words again. And David, the little 13, 15 year old boy, heard it. I believe at this point from that morning boy that the Bible talks about said, from the time that David was anointed as a little boy, the Spirit of God came upon him. The Spirit of God was in him. But when David heard this, you want to see something here happen. When David heard him, the Spirit of God became activated. The Spirit of God from that anointing came on David and became activated. And check out what David says here. When the men of Israel all saw the man, they fled from him again. You ran again just like you did before for 40 days and 40 nights. You've been running. And they were very frightened. The men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is coming up? Surely he's coming up to defy Israel. The king will reward the man who kills him with great riches and will give him his daughter in marriage and he'll make his father's house, his family, free from taxes and service in Israel. Then David spoke to the man who was standing by and said, what would be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes the disgrace of his taunting from Israel? For who is this um, circumcised Philistine that he has taunted and defied the armies of the living God? That's why David got mad. He was hot. The Spirit of God was in him and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yet he should defy the armies of the living God. And this should be your feeling about whatever you're going through. Lord, I'm sick and tired of all what I'm going through. I'm sick and tired of drinking. I'm sick and tired of my drug habit. I'm sick and tired of my bills for me. I'm sick and tired of it. How long are you going to put up with it? Spirit of God was on this man. And you must have the Spirit of God living in you. Spirit of God has got to be living on you. Living in you. And what I mean by that, you do not have the power of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you. Some of you have gotten saved, but have you received the power yet? The power to deal with whatever you're going through. It's the power of God that's going to strengthen you. It's, it's the power of God that's going to give you to repel and fight off what the devil's throwing at you. Come on. Amen. And so we go on here. It, 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 it said when David heard him and he, David asked the same question. The men told him, this is what would be the done to the man that kills him. In verse 28, it goes on. Now Eliab, the brother's son, the uh, el oldest brother heard what he said to the men in Eliab. Eliab's anger burned against David. He said, why have you come down here? And who did you leave those few sheep within the wilderness? I know your perception, your overconfidence, and the evil of your heart, for you have come down in order to see a battle. He came down to see a battle, but you ain't doing no fighting. There's no battle going on. David was hot, even as his brother, because his brother knew uh, how David was. And David was hot because this guy had come down here and defied the armies of the living God. And you supposed to be my brother. I was always afraid of you, but now I see. You were a punk. You were a punk. You were afraid of this guy coming down. He's intimidating the armies of the living God every day. So David goes down here. David turns around and says here uh, that he knew he had to, his brother said, I need to come down here. To, I know the presumption of your heart. I need to come down here to see a, a, a battle. But David said, what have I done now? Was it not just a harmless question? And David turned away to someone else and asked the same question. In the King James Version, it said, David turned from one to one and said, Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is 
there not a call that I should be angry with this devil for coming up here to find the armies of the God? That's what David did. He turned from one to one and said, is there not a cause for me to be hot? Is there not a cause for me to be angry? And he goes on here. It said that when the words David spoke, verse 31, were heard, the men reported them to Saul and sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's courage fail because of him, God. Your servant will go out and fight with this Philistine. Then Saul said to David, you are not able. See, the first thing somebody wants to say, when you're trying to speak, speak positive in the Lord, somebody, when it comes back, and speak, speak negativity. You have to listen to what God says. God's word carries all power and our authority. And that all power and authority, he's invested and gave to you. Everybody sitting here. Whether you know it or not, he's given you that power and authority. But what are you doing with it? Is it still in your pocket? Is it still in your pocket? It goes on here. And verse 31, then David said to Saul, you are not able to go against the Philistine, for you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. He's been fighting many people all, that's all he does all the day long, and you're only a youth. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his, this is when the Bible says, and they overcame because of the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. This is what David is getting ready to share with them, the testimony of what God did for him while he was tending the sheep. But David said, your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion uh, or a bear came and took the lamb out of the flock. He said, I went out after it. I attacked it and rescued the lamb from his mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it by a whiskers and I struck and I killed it. Your servant has both killed the bear, the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has torn it and defied the armies of the living God. David wasn't, he was hot. He didn't care about the woman who was his Saul's daughter who was all fine and pretty as whatever. He didn't care about the house free from taxes. No, the spirit of Lord and the spirit of God got activated in David because he had defied the armies of the living God. That's why he got upset. That's why he got angry. And I'm telling you, the spirit of the living God, if some of you have it or some of you don't, the spirit of the living God is inside of you will overcome any habit, anything that's bothering you, anything you're going through, will, the spirit of the living God will defeat it in your behalf. Amen. It will defeat it. You got to believe it. You got to know it. You got to feel it. You gotta feed in the word of God. Like we were saying one day, you can't come here once a week, one cold snack and eat and think you're gonna live the rest of your, your whole uh, week and don't get in God's word. You can't do it. You gotta get in God's word every day. It's food for you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what you gotta do. And so with uh, David, in verse 37, David said, The Lord who rescued me out of the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and may the Lord be with you. He said, Go and may the Lord be with you because he knew he was supposed to be the one going. But the spirit of fear was on Saul. Mm -hmm. And like we talked about, my wife and I talked about it, you only can go as far as your leader is going to take you. Mm. You only can go as far as your leader is going to take you. That's why when Pastor Tony is telling you to pray and get into the Word of God, you got to do it. Be obedient to your leader. There's always a rank in the following order. God has a pecking order, and it's an order here. So we just encourage you in the Word of the Lord. Verse 38 says that Saul dressed David in his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head and a coat of mail on him. David fast and swore and put the armor on him. Come on, he's a 13, 15 year old boy. He tried to walk, but he could not go because he had not used them. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with thee because I am not used to them. So David took them off. But 
The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. You can't, like a lot of people, you know, I'm not knocking these programs, the AA and uh, whatever program they got out there. A lot of times man is going to try to deal with you and to heal you through mad ways. But you belong to the, you belong to, you are a child of God and you need to understand that you got to do it God's way. Amen. Because the problem with most people, problem with what's going on in our life is a spiritual problem. Yes. Just what we see here in the physical realm, there's another kingdom. You have either the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. Which kingdom are you living in? The Bible says to love not the world, and the good things are in the world. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. As the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Which kingdom are you in? Either you're on the world side, or you're on God's side. Either you're of the spirit of the world, or you're the spirit of you are the spirit of the spirit of God. That's the battle, man and woman. That's it. You got to make it up in your mind to be, like I said, to be sick and tired of being sick and tired of what you're going through. You hear me? It's the bottom line. That's what it is. He tried to go with them, but he couldn't go with them, and he took them on. Then he took his shepherd's staff in his home, look what it says, and he chose for himself five smooth stones out of the stream bed, out of the stream bed and put them in the shepherd bag which he had that is his shepherd pouch with his sling in his hand he approached the philistine now there's many stories about different theologians talking about the five smooth stones i heard one i read one and i know it's to be true the reason why david had the five smooth stones because david david knew that goliath had four other brothers. And in case they were there, he'll be ready for them because he took five smooth stones. One for each one. Another revelation I got, I was reading this book. It talks about the smooth stone. It talks about the water. If you put water and it keeps running over jagged edges, rocks, what happens? It becomes smooth. It becomes smooth, which shows me the Bible talks about the washing of the water of the world. All of those things in your life that you're going through, stay in God's word, it's going to smooth it out. The more and more you put water on it, it's going to smooth it out. And that is, I'm telling you, it's, it's the truth. So it goes on here. It, it says in verse 41, the Philistine came up and approached David with his, sh with his shield bearing in front of him. When the Philistine looked around and saw David, he derided and disparaged him because he was just a young man with a ruddy complexion and a handsome appearance. Now, never mind, you're so happy. David, Goliath had an attitude. He looked around and not only wasn't it saw, it wasn't even a man, it was a boy. And it talks about when I was reading this, and the wife was talking about it. This mom, this joker had an attitude, didn't man? Check out what happens here. Didn't he? he told me he was a godly appearance, and the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with a shepherd's staff? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. He cursed him with a body of gods of work, and he was a part of all those gods. He cursed him. And then it goes on and says, then the Philistine also said to David, come to me. See, this is when that word, this is when the word meets the word. Are you going to stand when, when the bills are overwhelming and intimidating? Are you going to stand when you're just going to I want to stop, I want to stop, but I can't, I can't. This is how the devil comes at you, and he keeps coming, and the devil will start throwing intimidating things to you. He says, come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the beast of the field. Mm -hmm. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give you the corpse of the army of the Philistine this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts on the earth. 
so that all the earth may know that there is a God in this way. And that's what I'm telling you. You got the Spirit of God living in you. Yes. You got to understand. You got to recognize and understand that God is giving you power and authority over no matter what you're going through. You got to believe that. You got to take that to heart. You got to believe that. And so you got to understand that this devil threw back. Taunting and to try to intimidate David. What did David do? David came back at him with his, with the word the Lord put in his mouth to come at the devil. You got to speak God's word back at the devil. You must do it. You must do it. If you're going, going through something, you say, you have to talk to him like this. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I'm not going to drink no more. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to take drugs no more in Jesus' name. I have the power of God living in I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> you have to say it and believe it. Amen. You have to do it. And he goes on here. And then David, when he got there, he said that you may know that there is a God of Israel and that this assembly may know that the Lord does not say with a sword or with a spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. David was speaking mighty powerful. When the Philistine rose and came forward to meet David, look at what it says. It says David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. So this Philistine was coming because he was hot. One translation of the Bible said that he was like, oh, I can't believe this boy coming at me. And when he came at David, David ran to him. He didn't run from his problem. He ran to him. He, he reached in his pocket and he grabbed one of those five smooth stones. Check this out. When he came forward to meet David, David ran toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. But David put his David put his hand in the bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone penetrated his forehead and he fell down on the ground. So David tried up and over the Philistine with a sling and a stone, and he struck down the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. I said that because when he said he hit him in the head, it said the stone sunk in his head. What did the head do? It's the brain center. Some of you may feel like you've been hit in the head with a stone. It's got your mind messed up. It's got your mind messed up. And the millions of all around this world, my wife and I talk about it, but a revelation out of that is this. The Bible says that the man is the head of the woman, or head of his family. What the devil has skillfully did, he learned from that lesson. He has skillfully, he has skillfully manipulated and hit men or women in the head where they separated from the body. They separate the man from the woman. Separate a man from their children. And as a result of that, now they are running around here because they have their head messed up. They, they're messed up in the head, in the brain center. They are messed up in the brain center. And so it goes on here. It said, but David didn't have nothing in his hand. It goes on, it says here in verse, it says, verse 51. So he ran and stood over the Philistine and grabs his words. It's the grass and swore and drew it out of his sheep and killed them and cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their mighty champion was dead, the spirit of fear came on them and they took off of it. Remember, they were all cocky earlier, but when they saw their, their champion get killed, that changed the whole deal. That changed the whole deal. And so they took off and they fled. The men of Israel and Judah still were to shout and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance to the valley of the gates of Ekron. And, they, and then they fairly wounded the Philistines, fell along the way to uh, Shagram, even as far as Gath, Gath of Ekron. Check this out. Then the sons of Israel returned from, they returned from the pursuit of the Philistines and they plundered their camp. They came and took everything that they had. They plundered their camp. They came back. After, the, after David had killed Goliath, they came into the camp and took all the gold, took everything out, 
everything that they had. They came and they got victory. In the same way with you. God has given you the victory, but the problem is, you don't know it. You don't know it. God has given you the victory, but you don't know it. Yes, what I'm telling you, we encourage you. Brother Tony, myself, my wife, my brother here, we, we encourage you in the world. It's a, you got to get in the world. You must get in the world, God. You must get in the world. And he goes on, it says here, uh, uh, after he the captain, David took the hand of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his weapons in his tent with Saul. Saul David going out against the Philistine. He said to Abner, the captain of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? And Abner answered, by your life, O king, I do not know. The king said, the, the king said, ask whose son is this young man? And when David returned from killing the lion, the Philistines Abner took him and brought him up before Saul, at the head of the Philistines' hand. Saul asked him, whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant, Jesse, the Bethlehemite. I just want to encourage you with that particular word. Because, like I said, the Bible talks in the book of Acts. Pat, do me a favor, get Acts 1 and 8, start with verse 7. This is talking about when Jesus had came, uh, Jesus came and appeared before his disciples. Because he was going back to the Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said something real powerful to him here. Pat, read Acts 1, I think it's 7. Okay. I'm reading now the Amplified okay, go ahead. Bible. You said one, eight, one, seven, right? Yes, yeah, seven and eight. Okay. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times of Ephraim, which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Ghost come upon you, and he will be my witnesses to tell the people about me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Amen. So what does that say is that you must be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You must do that. You have to do that. And there's one other place in there that I want you to read this. It's in the book, it's in the book of Luke. In Luke 11, I'm going to read something to you. And I want you to hear what he says. I think it's in Luke 11 and 78. Okay. Luke 11 and 9. I want you to hear this. He said, I tell you, let me start from verse 1. Or verse 5. One, okay. Verse 1, 11 and 1. It said, it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, he finished one of his disciples after he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John also taught his disciples, he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, that will be your name. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us of our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone. You got to forgive everybody. Everyone who's indebted to us who has offended or wronged us. And lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from evil. Then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him at midnight and says, friend, let me eat three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine who was on a journey just come to visit me, and I have nothing to serve him. And from the inside he answers, do not bother me, the door has already been shut. And my children and I are in bed. I cannot give a get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not give get up and give him anything, just because he is his friend, he said, yet because of his persistence and his boldness, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who keeps on asking persistently receive and he who keeps on seeking persistently finds. And to him who keeps on knocking persistently, 
the door will be open. Now check this out. This is the crux of the matter I'm getting to with you. He said, Which, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will he give him a snake instead of a fish? No. Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? He says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him and continue to ask him? You have to ask God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the same power of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. You hear me? That's what you need in your life. Well, I'm even glad you're here. I told the Lord I'm going to do this if you're here today. I want to pray for you. Okay? Come on up here. And I want you guys to extend a hand. Come up here, honey. Sit me. Sit me.
is. And what Jonathan said about the spirit inside of David that had to be activated, you have that spirit inside of you. Amen. But have you activated? Have you believed that you really do have all the power to knock down any strongholds that are in your life? And, you know, things about the Holy Spirit, I grew up Catholic, you know, when I was young, until I was about 18. Things about the Holy Spirit are uncomfortable for a lot of people. And you're scared because it's another realm. And you don't understand that people speak in tongues. And we shy away and we think they're crazy and this and that. But the Holy Spirit has the power. Yeah. That's the power to deliver. If you want the Holy Spirit, if you want any of us to pray for you, to lay hands on you, I'm asking you right now. If you want to do it after the service, come up to Jonathan, myself, Sheena, any one of the leaders here. We will lay hands on 